So my mom texted me a link to an article, a news article. And I click it, and here's the headline. A casual conversation with a friend prompted me start saving for retirement after guilt and shame held me back for years. You read that as it's written, by the way. Yes. V- verbatim. That's the alleged headline. <laughs> a casual conversation with a friend prompted me start saving. It should be prompted me to start yeah. saving for retirement after guilt and shame held me back. <laughs> for, first of all, worst headline ever. Um Poor SEO, that's search engine optimization people. Uh, A better headline would have been uh, doing these three things will send you rocketing to the poor house, something like that. But yeah, terrible headline. And I didn't read it. Worst clickbait ever. (laughs) I think it's so funny that that your mom sent you that. I'm wondering what was her... Did she read that and think, oh, guilt and shame has held my son back for years. I'm yeah. going to forward him this article. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, uh, my, I'm a continual financial disappointment to my mom because, uh, well, as, as a teenager, I wanted her to buy me Stussy shirts <laughs> and TNC Surf Hawaii. And she only bought me uh, Ocean Pacific OP, which was uh, the low end brand. What a bad mom. As a fifth grader to eighth grader. In the Tony suburbs of sunny San Diego, California. Uh, welcome back to But I'm Still a Good Person by Vince Nicholas. I'm Vince Nicholas. I'm joined by my sparkling wifey, Carolyn Nicholas. Hello. Hello, honey. Thank you for coming on the pod today. Uh, thank you for joining me at the dining room table. Uh, so this is a fireside chat this week in Nicholas's. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just rando thoughts thrown in and hopefully it'll be something stimulating on some level we're just sipping tea around our fireplace on a sunday evening right reflecting on the week right except the f- us. <laughs> our fireplace isn't on we have no tea uh i was trying to paint a picture uh, of, you, of warmth that's for, true i'm sorry listeners. i should I, that's the first rule of uh talk <laughs> radio i didn't pile on i'm sorry honey <laughs> it's it's the first rule of improv you got to you can't, you got to like keep going, keep the idea going. No matter how bad. <laughs> yeah. You got to advance it. You, I, I'm there for you. Yes. Uh, our fire is roaring. <laughs> Chestnuts are ro- roasting on it. Uh, Dean Martin is playing on the Google Nest Mini. Uh, I have my chamomile tea and uh, we're just sitting here chatting. Uh, so let's start off with darling daughter, Luna Marie. She's had quite the week. She's had... A huge week. Uh, we tried to book her on this uh, podcast, and uh, we we don't get the A list guests, honey. <clears throat> we we struck out with uh, Dak Shepard, and we we swung and missed with uh, George Clooney, and then we tried to book uh, Luna Marie, Hollywood A lister, right up there with The Rock and Ellen DeGeneres, uh, and we failed miserably multiple times. <laughs> the girl cannot be bribed. Right. She's got some fortitude. Yeah, well, she saves the uh, the 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 bonus content for uh, for our Patreon. We don't have a Patreon, uh, <laughs> so let's go through her week, uh, darling daughter. First of all, uh, I think it was Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. She went on a walk by herself. Uh, this was the first time ever. Yep, this is the first time. And where we used to live in Rosemont, California, you would have never no. let her walk down the street by herself. I did one time. Ooh. What? Ooh. Yes. I'm recalling shortly before we moved last year, mm-hmm. I did send her to get the mail by herself. Ah, uh, okay. So but she, that was, she had a specific destination. Yeah. And you had some sort of time. It's like a, how long would, is the walk from our, the door to the mailboxes there? A 30 minute? seconds, 45 seconds? Yeah. So yeah. she was back at like in under five minutes. Okay. But she went on her first leisurely stroll alone. Right. What, what did she, she tell you? She said, Mom, I want to go for a walk. And were you be dumbfounded? Yeah, were, you, were you taken aback? Because she never wants to go for walks right, with me. Right. <laughs> with she, okay. Well, uh, yeah. She she uh, she loves uh, uh, sitting in her loft, laying in her loft. We have to pull, b- beg and plead, and uh, pull her <laughs> to <laughs> to go for just our, our casual hikes, which we did today. We walked around, uh, saw the goats in West Sac. 
Uh, she she loves her favorite place in the world is to be in her bed and she calls it I'm in my I'm in a burrito cuz she like right. rolls up in her blanket yeah. and she's all like snug and cozy. Yeah. Watching a uh, MasterChef. <laughs> watching a uh, MasterChef. Wa- watching Gordon Ramsay yell at people making burritos and she <laughs> feels like a burrito. It's very uh, it's very oh, meta. Yeah. We should we should serve her uh, burritos while she's watching people <laughs> make Okay. That's too far to go uh but it's, and did you have any hesitancy yeah well first of all i was like what's this child up to right she's and she go didn't smoke take... behind the bushes right <laughs> she's gonna go vape <laughs> she's gonna go vape with the other teenagers uh she, and she didn't take her phone yeah which was startling she, she yeah and... i thought i thought okay <clears throat> she's gonna go talk to some uh cute tall eighth grade boy on the <laughs> telephone uh video chat but she didn't have her phone yeah, so I said you cannot leave the the condo complex, mm-hmm. but it's pretty large. Like you could do yeah. a, a good walk. You could get lost, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> um, right after she was gone, I was like, oh, "Why didn't she? I should have had her take her phone." Yeah, you I was just so like startled by the entire thing right. that I wasn't thinking clearly. You started worrying. You started. Oh my gosh, I was so pacing. <laughs> I was like Frankie running back and forth right. to all the different windows, right. looking out like our cat Frankie. Yeah. I, I was um, I was my jaw was agape. Uh, I was I was uh, caught off guard, unawares. Um, but eh, I mean, we live in a mostly safe place. We do see a random yeah. homeless uh, gentleman mm-hmm. wander through once yeah. in a while. But uh, I I thought if she stayed on the complex, she'd be fine. Yeah. But not. I yeah. You should have made her take her phone. Definitely. She was um, gone f- for ten minutes, maybe ten to fifteen minutes. Ten to fifteen minutes, <clears throat> and. Her her reasoning was... She just wanted to. She just wanted to go for yeah. a walk. All right. And it's her first walk <laughs> on her own. We're proud of you, Luna Marie. Proud of darling daughter. Here's an award. Here's a trophy. <laughs> Everyone gets a trophy. Uh, but I thought it was a, a big, uh, somewhat big momentous yeah, occasion. It was for me, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so one day, one day they're asking to go for a walk, and the next day they're moving to Auburn to go to college, honey. Uh, next uh, topic uh, with Luna Marie, she got now again. Uh, we lived in Rosemont, California. We now live in West Sacramento, California. Um, and this is a bigger issue, but uh, the headline is that she got her an invite to her friend's birthday party. New school. Yes. New group of friends. Right. She got her first invite. Right. So that that's the, the bigger issue that I, I kind of want to focus on. Um, you raised them. You grew up in Rosemont, California. Yeah. Uh, you ra- they le- le- uh, Darling daughter Luna Marie and Lennox Albert, uh, darling son. Luna is 12. Uh, Lennox is 9. And they lived their entire lives in yep. Rosemont, California. So I, uh, when we were just talking about friends and growing up, um, you mentioned that uh, you know, you you've known some of the moms in Rosemont for a decade or so. Yeah, uh, yeah. The kids that Luna and Lennox are friends with and going to school with, uh, Luna's been. Well, she's in sixth grade now, so she's been going to school with these same people, right? Since like, what year? I don't know. A long time. Yeah, a like long time. Ten years. And or, then no, no, since five, right? Since age five. Okay, so six years. Okay, six seven years. But the, your entire uh, then, <laughs> you don't really know what's going on the first few years. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's something um, to grow up to stay in that uh, w- with the same group of friends. Uh, and Luna still has uh, her group of friends. Um, but I, I it, it's it, it's unusual I think it, it's unique to to stay in that mm-hmm. in one area I mean you grew up yeah I I did that I think it is more common for kids to at least change schools mm-hmm. change t- neighborhoods yeah. once or more in their lives yeah um, but the other thing about the fact that they were being raised in the same neighborhood that I was have been living in forever my whole life is that a lot of the parents I knew. Right. I have connections with a lot of the families yeah. at the school. Luna knows I, her friends. You know their moms. I know their moms you from s- my own childhood s- or like right. friends of friends. And they're right. just, I'm just familiar with a lot of it. Yeah. Like you, with a lot of people. You see them at Save Mart. I see them at 24 Hour uh, Fitness on Micron. Um, so there's there was a definite community. Now, keep in mind that this is a community that we wouldn't let Darling Daughter <laughs> walk down the street in because uh, yeah. it's, it's, it can be a little uh, rough and tumble. But uh, so they 
So we we yanked him out of Rosemont because well it's it's a better neighborhood let's be honest um, and so she got her first invite uh, and I, w- I was extremely happy to hear that now yeah. on the bigger issue honey because you're in the thick of it you're in the trenches with the kids I work you're working from home but uh, uh, their school is a two minute walk or whatever mm-hmm. uh, just down the street from us so you're walking them there and they had the added thing which I think was a positive that they started uh, their schools on zoom yeah uh, because of covid uh, but I think that kind of instead of just showing up on your first day of school and saying what the hell is going on I don't, <laughs> I'm scared I don't know anyone which I could absolutely see and which I went through um, and just for reference of myself we moved uh, much more uh, so uh, keeping the the kids in uh, keeping the kids in, in the situation that they were is completely foreign to me. Mm. But I, I I loved it. I love that Luna and Lennox were in the same literally the same classrooms, the same buildings yeah. they used to go uh-huh. uh, attend school in. And I thought it was just quaint and and beautiful. But on the other hand, I think moving is, will build something <laughs> character wise definitely teach them a little uh just the uh dealing with adversity and mm-hmm. changes and that's life and uh outside of that uh, movie tag with john ham and <laughs> and the arrow guy from marvel uh growing up uh with the same group of friends from uh <laughs> from when you pop out of the birth canal until college that rarely happens yeah. um so she got her first invite uh, and oh, but oh, I wanted to ask you how how is go, how is their making friends? How are they getting along? Um, they're both doing really well. Mm-hmm. I I was worried the first like week. Just I mean, it takes time. Mm-hmm. I I didn't expect them to make friends right away, but yeah. you just hope that it does happen. And right, like by the end of Luna's first week, she was like getting phone numbers of cool. classmates, and yeah. she has a ton of new friends now. She has like a lot. Um, yeah. Lennox, actually, there's one kid, one family at the school that we know, Mm -hmm. because Lennox actually went to daycare with this family for years, from like age zero to age five. Right, right, right. right. Him and this boy were the same age. Yeah. And they're total BFF little buddies. Mm -hmm. Um, That family just moved back here. They were gone. They moved away for a couple of years. They just moved back, and he happens to be at the school now. They're not in the same class, but him and Lennox do see each other, and hopefully we can get them together to hang out soon. Mm -hmm. So Lennox does have one friend, Mm -hmm. but he's also made new friends. There's one boy in particular who uh, they exchange phone numbers, and they talk on the phone, and they, like, get in the Minecraft game together. Yeah. Like, remotely play the games together. Yeah. And they they play for hours together. Oh, yeah. Virtual, like... It's it's endless, <laughs> and and at one point, uh, like a week or two ago, we were like, "Hey, do you want to? Uh, we'll just call him Steve. Uh, hey, do you want to hang out with Steve? You want Steve to come over? Do you want to go over to Steve's house?" And he was just like, "What? Why?" Yeah, he said, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Well, I thought you want to hang, uh, but hey, like pe- that's where the kids hang, yo." And that's kind of Lennox's personality. Luna is like super social mm. and all about friends, friends constantly wanting to be together, and yeah. But Lennox is a little bit more of like a he, introvert more of an introvert and um, he's perfectly happy mm-hmm. to just be at home be with us just be in his room mm-hmm. um so he has less of a need for that social interaction than luna does yeah yeah uh so uh yeah len so they're they're doing well uh that sounds good again getting an invite to a party um uh, which is which got postponed for oh, whatever yeah. reason uh but <laughs> so we were we were uh, over the moon to be frank uh, because uh, well we, we want uh, we want parents to drink with in West Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, we need right, we need some parent friends. Right, <laughs> we're tired of getting drunk in front of darling daughter and darling son every Friday night and watching in sync videos. No, uh, we're not but, tired of that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, so we we were asking. So she gets Luda Marie gets the invite and. She got the address because it's going to be at this girl's house. And so I hop on the Zillow and let's just say uh, the, the the value, uh, market value of that home. Wow. <laughs> Can we party with those parents? Uh, it's about double the market value of our home. <laughs> and, and double the size. Triple the square footage. Oh my. Can, like, can we come over? Can we hang with these can parents? Can we be friends? Can we be friends? Well, that's another aspect. I, actually, they don't know anybody. They're getting to know people. So she gets invited to this person, this girl's house, mm-hmm. and I'm like, 
I don't know anything about this family. Right. I don't know who lives there. Right. I've no, I don't even I don't even know what Luna's friend like what this girl looks like. Right. So it's whereas something. whereas in Rosemont you knew I knew everybody you knew and the Olivia Rivera and you know uh, Grace uh, Isabel's mom yeah. for years and years and and you have all their numbers and everything. And that with COVID being closed, we've had zero um, activities at school. Mm-hmm. Normally, we'd be uh, throughout the year we would have been going to the school for various things, right. events, and whatnot. So we would have seen people, met people. Right. We right. haven't been able to do that yet. Right. So I was trying to think, how can I meet the mom? Right. How can I just at least get a little bit of info before I send my kid over to this house? Mm-hmm. So Luna gave me the mom's number. Her okay. friend gave. Have you texted? No. Are you guys BFFs yet? <laughs> I have the number, but then I just, I didn't. And then the party got postponed, so I'm like, okay. Well, the, well, uh, social graces, honey. Are you going to text first? Are you going to call first? <laughs> I'm going to video chat her <laughs> right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> Hop on the Zoom. <laughs> Happy hour, Zoom. Hey, what's up? <laughs> um, yeah, the, well, I would, I would say, uh, well, can, can Luna uh, arrange a meeting or, or is, yeah. do you think just the phone um, thing? The mom does well work at the school, so uh, yeah, the mom works at the school yeah, apparently. I, so I, Luna's got to arrange a a tete a tete, as it were, uh, just, a, a meeting uh, of higher ups. Yeah, we'll figure it out, yeah, and um, we'll figure it out. We'll see. We'll 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 face this challenge if the party gets rescheduled. Right, but it, it does look good, um, and yeah, I now that you mention it, because we went to Sequoia, mm-hmm. there were events. Tons Every of few stuff. months, fall fair, yeah. talent show, yeah. school dance, and I, I liked going because it, it reminded me that we were very attractive compared to the <laughs> other parents, and we don't know where we stand in West Sacramento, oh, honey. Yes. Uh, to be frank, uh, but yeah, so it, it's been postponed. We'll keep you updated. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're, we're I'm I'm joyed, and again, it, it's something that uh, you. People, this is what people deal with, and I think it, it'll be good for them in the end. Oh yeah, and uh, I agree. And, but Zoom, I think, very helpful because you know what the kids look like. You kind of yeah. know their idiosyncrasies, mm-hmm. and then you show up and you you have some sense of going, "What's up?" and what's going on instead of showing up and saying, uh, "I'm I want to go home." <laughs> the first day of school in person, one of Luna's teachers said to her, "I didn't recognize you without your headphones." <laughs> right. Oh dear. <laughs> Where's your cat? <laughs> I know Frankie Blue, our cat, has been in a few Zoom uh, classes. Uh, third aspect I wanted to discuss uh, with Luna Marie, about Luna Marie. Uh, she felt sick on Thursday. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Thursday morning she wakes okay. up. She's nauseous. She's mm-hmm. achy. And they're, and they're doing uh, distance learning one day a week, but in-person learning four days a week. Four and days a week. Because of COVID. Uh, and it's just two to three hours yeah. sessions, right? Uh, so she doesn't feel good. And so uh, uh, the dining table is yours, honey. Uh, walk us through uh, the nightmare process that has been. Well, back in the day, you know, when I was a young man, you would f- you would feel bad. You would get nauseous. You wouldn't feel good. And then hopefully you would bounce back the next day. You'd show up and be like, hey, Tim. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Hey, let's go vape over there. No, just kidding. But uh, that you you would get sick and you would show up the next day or you might take a few days off. But uh, it, it, that's the way it worked. But well, with COVID, uh, h- how does it yep, work? It's, there's COVID rules now. So yes. Thursday morning, I emailed the school. Luna will be out today. She's sick. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes later, I get a phone call. Hi, this is the school office. What are Luna's symptoms? <laughs> and I was like... Surprise, caught off guard. So I, I said her couple of symptoms oh, she has. So you were honest? Oh, I never, was. This never was my honest. first mistake. Uh, I was honest. <laughs> oh, how dare you? How the nerve, honey, the nerve. So of you. the lady says, okay, in order for Luna to come back to school, she has to have a negative COVID test. Oh, dear. Or a note from the doctor. Mm-hmm. Or she can quarantine and not come back to school for 10 days, mm-hmm. which takes us nearly to the end of May. Yeah. I was like, what? 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 <laughs> what? I was like, well, let me write this down. Oh, my I can't, God. I got to get this straight. And so I was like, oh, my God. So, so immediately I'm like, why didn't I say she has a toothache? Right. Why didn't I lie? Right. Because. <laughs> why didn't I say, I'm a horrible mom and uh, I, I was busy uh, dealing crack on the corner. So I forgot to bring her to school. But she'll be there tomorrow. She's perfectly healthy. <laughs> so I was like, God dang it. So she stayed home Thursday. She stayed home Friday. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we have a video appointment with her doctor so she's staying home tomorrow as well right 
Um, I'm hoping he'll just email me something yes. that I can forward to the school so she can be back there Tuesday. Pray. Right. <laughs> so one day of nausea, nausea, nauseousness, nausea has turned into three days of absences <laughs> yeah. because of COVID. And we, we hear, because uh, your brother is in Placer County, and uh, he says uh, kids... They, if they get COVID, they stay home and then they come back. Yeah. He, it's, not a he was pro, saying, it's not a whole deal. Even. They've been back in school full time in person since like October. Right. And they've had zero cases where COVID has been transferred from kid to kid. Right. And uh, they do wear masks, but um, they have had kids who have had COVID. Right. But yeah, they just stay home. They like when you they get quarantine, sick, yeah. they get better. And then... um. Do they have to sit out for 14 days and probably. go through this whole yeah, deal? Probably, oh. They probably, but Jeez. there's been zero instances of kid to kid right. at school transferring. Right, it. right, right, right. It's just, it's just dumb. So. <laughs> it's so stupid. And we're so close to the end of the year. And like, I want her to get back as soon as possible because like we've been talking about, she's like making friends. Right. I don't want her to lose these connections. I want right. her to keep the friendships going. Oh, dear. So yeah. cross Hopefully. your fingers, guys. And <laughs> yeah. Oh man! Next time, <laughs> much like I do with uh, well, uh, with my mom, just lie, honey. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would have if I had been thinking clearly. I was so like caught off guard by the yeah. situation. Yeah, lie, uh, <laughs> lie to protect a uh, darling daughter. Lie to protect her. <laughs> lie to protect yourself. Well, lie <laughs> is is a uh, lie fib. as often as you can, guys. Fib. Don't tell That's the, the truth. Lesson. Okay, so that was darling daughter. Uh, let's move on to some just nonsense. Uh, now we have a Brita, honey, a Brita water pitcher. A Brita. Yes, a Brita. Uh, and that was like the first thing we bought together after we got married. Was it? Yes. Okay. You moved into my place in yes. Rosemont and I didn't have one. Ah. So we went shopping like yeah. a couple days after our wedding. That's, we, we like went hog wild, right? <laughs> we bought a bunch of stuff? Or was I don't that, remember. Was that just part of regular grocery shopping? I do remember the Brita though. Okay. And actually, it's not an official Brita. It's like a knockoff brand. Right. It's the Walmart Brita. Oh. <laughs> well, you save a couple That's bucks. why the lid always breaks off and you got to pop it back on. Honey, it teaches you uh, uh, a grit. <laughs> you, const- it teaches you to stick with something and not give up. Um, so uh, for people, everyone knows, but the Brita has uh, the tank on the bottom where the it has a, a sort of a reservoir on top. And then you pour the water in there and it drips through the filter and then it goes into the tank on the bottom. And theoretically, that's where the water is uh, when you pour it into your cup. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but I, I, I don't know why I do this, but I, I keep both the tank and reservoir completely full because I look at it like as a, a cooler. And I just, it keep, our fridge is cold and I want to keep as much cold water as possible. When I drink water in the middle of the night, I drink a big glass. And so that takes up most of uh, the, the, the tank. So I just, I want as much cold water in there and it drives you up the wall. Well, here's the problem. When it's super full to the brim yes. like that, yes. you pour it and it, co- it spills everywhere. Not for me, honey. You got to be careful. <laughs> do it over the sink. We're gonna do it. We're when this is when we're done with this pod. Yes, we're yes. gonna go in the kitchen and we're gonna try this out. Well, uh, what happened is uh, you filled Frankie Blue's bowl, and yeah. and the the re- the the upper tank was full, and so you ended up spilling because there was just a bunch of water <laughs> coming. By the way, yes, we give our cat Britta water. Yes. Well, he would do the same for us, uh, but. So, and you got upset at me and I'm sorry, but that I, again, I just want as much cold water as possible. I'm the only one who uh, refills it, to, to be frank. Yeah. Luna refills it sometimes. Luna, a couple of weeks ago, Luna said, I'm the only one who fills the Brita. No, not really, no. Well, you know is, is, is she lying like you should have been to <laughs> school administration, honey? She she does refill it, but sometimes there's there's like a ten percent of a of a glass of water in there, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> there's but like I, a half inch of water. At the I very know. Bottom. I always refill it, and I put in a ton of water, and I realize that the water uh, in the upper uh, tank doesn't get filtered. But who cares? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all. So water. you don't care about the filtering. You care, you care about the temperature. Oh, exactly. Uh, well, I'm a cold temperature kind of guy. You know. what? I'm going to give this one to you. Mm-hmm. 
Um, what are you giving? I'm flying my <laughs> white flag. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, because you know what? I you you drink the Brita water. I think Luna does yeah. sometimes, but I always get the water that comes straight out of the fridge. The little water dispenser yeah, we have in the a fridge. Little nozzle there, yeah. So I don't I don't see that water. It's cold, but it's not as cold as the Brita. Yeah, and you, I don't like my water as cold. Like right. I never put ice in my drinks. Well, you talk like about uh, differences in in Brita uh, lifestyle, honey, <laughs> but uh, you don't. I, I like my my beverages as cold as possible. Yeah, cold as hell. <laughs> and uh, you and Luna, d- you don't mind if if your water is uh, warm. I like it on the cool side, but I'm Cute. fine if it's like room temperature. Hmm. Okay. I I find the colder the better. It's just way more refreshing. Cools me down. I'm sweating right now, honey. <laughs> as you can see. Uh, <laughs> uh, but and well, th- this goes to uh, food. Like you like fruit, you don't mind fruit. That's that's warm. That's room temperature. I do not like cold fruit. I like room temperature oh, fruits. I love. Again, it adds to the refreshment, <laughs> the enjoyment, the experience. I have fond memories of my mom pulling a giant watermelon out of the fridge, okay. hacking at it with the knife, and then you know cold what? watermelon. Yo, uh, watermelon no is better. the exception. Yeah, cold crisp watermelon is in the, the best. summer, and yeah. I do keep it in the fridge actually. Yeah. Well, I keep wood. I keep stuff in the fridge because you have to. Mm-hmm. To keep it fresh, but like Lennox wants his oranges put in the fridge for a while before I peel them. Mm. I'm like, what? He's very particular. <laughs> <laughs> and even like, I don't like fruit water except for watermelon. I don't like fruit like straight out of the fridge. Huh? I like to let it like kind of, kind of warm, mellow. warm, <laughs> kind of acclimate, <laughs> acclimate to the environment. And that oop. Okay, let's move on to uh, the Walmart pickup trials and tribulations. Now, uh, we've done Walmart pickup for I think almost. Not as long as we've been here, no. but for several, several months. Yep. We started doing it and uh, because I got the Walmart Capital One card and I saved 5%. Um, oh, is that why we started? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and and we don't have to... The, well, once you do the pickup, oh. you, you you feel like an animal when you have to go inside <laughs> there and look at all the uh, the butt crack and, <laughs> and uh, the braless uh, oh. overweight women and uh, gra- grabbing like... A twelve pack of Pepsi from the shelf, putting it in your shopping cart, ha- going to the cashier, oh. having to wait for uh, the person in front of you has a, a a shopping cart full of food. They're spending four hundred dollars, so you gotta <laughs> wait for that, and then you gotta grab the twelve pack from your cart and put it back on the conveyor. It's a belt. lot of physical labor. They scan it, and then you gotta grab it once it's post scanned and put it back into your shopping cart, and then you roll the shopping and car, and you have maybe a hundred. We spend about one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars uh, per week on groceries. Uh, then you roll it out to your car, and you gotta put it from your ca- the cart into your trunk. It's a, it's just it's an arduous process. What is this? the gym right <laughs> what is this? It's, it's, so we, we started doing pickup because again five percent off and the process is just it's it's heaven it, i was just saying it's heavenly they they yep. they they wheel out for people who haven't done it they wheel out they got a bunch of uh tubs uh, mm-hmm. on wheels and uh you you open your trunk for them and they just and it's Sometimes it's mostly bagged. It should be bagged. <laughs> Sometimes it's a ton of loose it, items. Right. It what? was it, half of it. Half of our all of our frozen stuff uh, this Saturday was uh, strewn about, bagless. <laughs> but I generally, ideally, in a, in a perfect world, uh, they they take all your items from these uh, these carts and toss them, well, uh, <laughs> gently place them into your trunk, yeah. slam your trunk closed for you, which they ask, and then it's it's just it's. It's a dream come it's true. Great. Uh, but so we started doing it uh, Saturday mornings, mm-hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock, for, depending <laughs> on what we were doing that that Saturday or whatever. Um, and then so a few times, I was like, well, let's start Friday night because we get we could get our groceries Friday night, we could get our uh, <laughs> White Claw <laughs> Bud Light hard seltzer Friday night, and we could enjoy uh, our White Claw slash Trulies on Friday night. So yep. we booked a few Friday nights in a row. Yes. And the first time was okay, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, it wasn't bad. Got it fairly quickly. The second time, I was by myself, uh, and it, there were a bunch of cars. First of all, all there's about t- 12 parking spots. Yeah. And they were all full, so I had to park in just a regular spot in in the same general vicinity. But you start, but uh, so I'm watching what's going on, and it's like a whole scene, man. There, there, there's 
the the few Walmart workers were completely overwhelmed. They they mm. overbooked it, or a couple uh, workers didn't show up. Um, I remember one guy getting out of his car. Saying, I've been here three hours. I've been here three hours. And then another lady got out of her car saying, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> and just uh, kind of, uh, well, v- uh, verbal abuse directed at mm. these poor uh, Walmart workers oh, yeah. who were pretty much trying their best. Again, it was overbooked uh, or people didn't show up. Um, who knows what happened? But Friday night was a disaster. The next Friday night, you went with darling daughter Luna Marie. And it was... It's Aww. very similar, right? Worse. Right. It was worse. So, yes, we got there uh, about 15 minutes early, mm-hmm. check in, and it's packed again, just like it was for you. Yeah. <clears throat> and same thing. People are angry. People, right. Everyone's like standing around outside. Right. People are cussing. <laughs> People are like, how long have you been here? How long have you been here? Right. That's every, crazy. Every That's time, crazy. <laughs> Every time the employee comes out with groceries for a car, they're accosted by like three or four people. Oh. So we wait and we wait. Yeah. About two hours go by. We're still waiting. Yeah. And so I texted you. Yeah. And I was, or I called you and I said, should we, we're here. We're fine. Yeah. Should we just stay? I can't, I want to get our groceries. I don't want right. to not get them. So you <laughs> You're said, like, yeah, I've just been, stay. I'm, I'm in this. <laughs> I'm going to finish. See it to the end. So I think we waited about an, another half hour. Finally, I've never, I haven't spoken to an employee this whole time because yeah. there's uh, cars around me that have been there before me. Right. But then I think it, there's I, no rhyme or reason. It makes no sense, and it's it's just mad dash. What's happening here? I think I at least want to check that. Like, did I get checked in? Am I in the queue? Right. So I did approach an employee mm-hmm. the next time I saw somebody, mm-hmm. and this person tells me, but at this it's nearly eight p.m. Mm-hmm. Our check-in time was five o'clock. Ah, this guy. And eight p.m. is when uh, pickup shuts down. The store stays open, but pickup—that's the last time you can book. Okay, this guy tells me we're still processing the four p.m. orders. Jeez, Louise. So at that point, I said, "Forget it." <laughs> right. So I said, "What are my options?" He tells yeah. me, "You can um, come back tomorrow morning. Just check in. Just show up. Check in." Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! So we. So left. you sat there in, in your car for. Three-ish yep. hours. We, we were in the front seat. We went outside and stretched our legs. I opened the back, sat in the back. Mm-hmm. Luna laid on the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> we passed. My, we took turns with my phone. She yeah. had the phone for 20 minutes. And yeah. I was like, it's my turn. Yeah. <laughs> so we did our best and to, be to frank, keep ourselves entertained. <laughs> it's Well, it, it's uh, it's entertaining watching people get angry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, c- tell the, the one, one gentleman uh, use the N-word uh, profusely. Yeah, um, yeah, he, he was like, I forget, what, what did he, he was, say he exactly? Was, he was uh, verbally, uh, he was upset <laughs> at, the, at his mm-hmm. late order, and he uh, he said something like, you got N-words in there, meaning in Walmart you have employees, yeah. you got N-words in there who could be out here, and why don't you get these, those N-words out here Aww. helping out? <laughs> Yeah. Quite frightening. So it was it was a bad scene. Yeah. It was a bad time for everybody. Yeah. So, so the next morning, you and I went back. Right. Together. Right. We faced it together. Yes. We went early, like 8 a.m. We did go early, yeah. And we checked in. Yeah. Explained what happened. And Super helpful lady. Yeah. Yeah. And she got our stuff together uh, really quickly. Yeah. And there was only a couple other cars there. Right. So it was a quick process. Yeah. Um, I don't... And then... After this, we noticed that in the the West Sac Facebook groups, mm-hmm. everyone, various people keep posting about this issue. Right. Well, I posted about it. Oh, you did? Yeah. I said, yo, FYI, beware. It's yeah. kind of a nightmare. You d- don't book a Friday night, which makes sense now that I think about it. Uh, and there were 50, 60 comments mm-hmm. and people just complaining. And because that's uh, Walmart has Walmart Plus, I believe, is the program. Which they con- they uh, contract through DoorDash, so the DoorDash drivers get the oh, stuff through there. Yeah, there and were a stuff lot of get- DoorDash drivers there, right? And their stuff gets backed up because they're waiting. Yeah. So they they need to deliver these Walmart orders, but they're waiting, and uh, That's people bad. like us are waiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it it was just. It was a it was a free for all. We all we all uh, bombarded on Walmart, and I tagged Walmart, and of course no one <laughs> responded. Uh, and I emailed them, and I said, "We deserve a hundred dollar gift card for and, our pain and suffering." Right, and they were like, "We can't uh, help you with that." Nah. 
Uh, and so, since then, though, a couple other people. It seems like every week now someone is posting about it. Mm-hmm. So it's still an issue. Yeah. It's going on different days of the week. Yeah. It's not always Friday nights. Yeah. <clears throat> I, f- I feel so bad for those workers having to deal with. I don't know what the problem is. Are they understaffed? Yeah. Uh, what's the deal? I don't, I, I don't know. I, I would say understaffed. I worked at Walmart for a short amount of time. And uh, when you're a manager at Walmart, you're pretty much uh, uh, trying to. Uh, plug holes on the titanic you just yeah. you just don't want the building to collapse <laughs> you mm-hmm. don't you don't want it to become a dumpster fire but uh a turnover and people calling in people just leaving not even <laughs> i don't i feel sick no there's none of that i want to go home i gotta uh, pick yeah. my wife up from the airport there's none of that not people just leave people quit mm-hmm. uh, all the time uh, so turnover is a huge problem. Getting people to show up and getting people to work hard, uh, yeah. very difficult, especially in these times. You always hear that about uh, the current labor market. Um, but so so we stopped the Friday night pickup, uh, yeah. thankfully. Uh, we do Saturday. Uh, we've been doing Saturday 8 a.m. It's just it, we're back into a bliss, honey, la la land. I keep telling you, though, don't tell people that's when we go. Right. That's they're, our secret. They're going to overbook. Everyone's going to start going. Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, last week there were, mm, there were a good amount of cars. I'd say eight cars. Mm. Uh, yesterday there were, there was one other car. Okay. Um, and I, well, it's, it feels like they know they got a handle on it again, but it was 8am and there was one other car. Cause yeah. like a minute after I pulled up, someone was like, I pulled up in a parking lot spot. Number one, and I heard someone shout, Bay number one is here. Bay number one is here. Oh, Who wow. has Bay one? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Whoa, holy crap. Uh, so it's, it's been, uh. Well, it's been uh, highs and lows with Walmart, <laughs> but we do love the pickup again. Yeah, uh, going inside the store and uh, seeing a bunch of uh, <laughs> unshaven people, <laughs> uh, uh, overweight, uh, obese, <laughs> smelly people—not uh, ideal anymore. And uh, oop. Okay, let's talk about our neighbor, uh, Andrew, uh, who lives next door. Yep. No, uh, there we're in a bit. We're in a condo. There's seven units in this giant structure building here. Uh, so he's quote unquote next door, mm-hmm. but his door is literally yeah. We share a wall. His <laughs> door isn't literally next door. Um, but he he has he got a new welcome mat, which I found very bizarre. And it's and I had you look at it the other. I was like, go look at it. But and it's a it's a it's a giant bee on it. Is it a bee or a wasp? It might be a wasp. I think it's a wasp. It might be larvae. <laughs> it's very odd. Does so, it, it has words on it too, right? Doesn't it say like welcome or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's 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 kind of disconcerting. <laughs> Is it scary? <laughs> it's not kind of dis- it's Well, it's just... And listen, uh, bees are uh, the cornerstone of this ecosystem <laughs> on this here planet. Show the bees respect. <laughs> but <laughs> on your welcome mat... It's it's very odd and either so either he's uh, my I have two uh, thoughts that either he's a beekeeper or he's a scary guy from Silence of the Lambs. Okay, he was in the bugs too, honey, and that's our neighbor. I want to know how did you see his mat? You have to like walk over there. It's, I, I park over there, and you were able to see it yeah. from your car. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, can I see thought it. you were over there being snoopy neighbor. No, no, no. Poking around people's no, front doors. Although that does happen too, honey. But let's not bring it up. Uh, let's move on to another animal, our Franklin Blue. Frankie Blue Nicholas, our cat. Uh, you bought him. We were at the Dollar Tree today. And you bought, well, not him. I mean, it's sort of here for him. But you bought uh, one of those red light. The laser pointer. A laser pointer. Yep. It was for Frankie's enjoyment. Okay. And so Lennox wanted to buy him one for his birthday back in February, <laughs> but we didn't. We, we are not celebrating our pet's birthday, okay? <laughs> we will not become those people. Are you? Are we going to get him a hat? <laughs> We're going to get him a cake. I'm going to bake him a cat-friendly cake. Oh dear! Uh, so, darling Lennox took to this laser pointer, going mad uh, like crazy, pointing it at Frankie, near Frankie, around <laughs> Frankie, and Frankie's going crazy like he's just swiping at it he's head moving left and right and my opinion is that it's borderline torturous <laughs> i mean i could see it being fun but on the other hand he's never going to catch this red light whatever it is and it's just gonna drive him mad am i wrong i don't know we'll never know because the cats can't tell us right so i don't know i think they have fun i think they like it i i 
Well, I, the, no. <laughs> he he isn't as overjoyed about Frankie isn't as over, overjoyed about the laser pointer now right. five hours later as he was at first. Right, because it was driving <laughs> him mad, man. So he he's back to playing with this hair ties. Mm, That's yes. his favorite toy of yes. all, and it's tangible. Yeah. He can hold it in his little paw. And yeah, I I thought I thought well I think. The red laser pointer is torture for cats. <laughs> I think he's smartened up. He he's wise. He's a smart cat. He's dumb sometimes, uh, but I, I think he was just like I'm. I'm over this. And I mean, uh, uh, you could say like playing fetch with a dog and a tennis ball is kind of dumb and monotonous <laughs> and repetitive. But that's something tangible. This yeah, this light like kind of messing with him, playing mind games, man. Mm. You're messing with his brain, man. His cerebro. Uh, so I, I'm I'm glad he got bored of it because uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to I don't want to do that to uh, darling Frankie. Oh. Uh, and finally, oh, and let's go back to bugs. Uh, so we we got bugs oh. in, in our garage. Yeah. Uh, it's not a it's not a huge no. problem, but they're down there. It's and, gross and annoying. Yeah, and, we don't want it to get worse. Yeah, and that's where uh, our my COVID gym is, or whatever. I, I got, we got a couple dumbbells down there. I got a I got a weight bench, and we work out there. We lift down there, so uh, bugs uh, are noticeable and have become a problem. So I got a couple uh, traps from Amazon. They're cheap. They're like three bucks or something for twelve. No, it was like ten for twelve. Anyways, it's quite cheap. Uh, but they're essentially uh, small pieces of uh like hard paper hard cardboard and it has a super sticky uh element on them mm-hmm. so the idea is that i uh, see are, are they attracted is there something in the smell going on there has to be okay so they're attracted by this sticky element and then they crawl onto the bug trap into the bug trap and then they get stuck in the this mm-hmm. glue-like substance and then that's it. Rest in power. <laughs> and then you, they starve to death, I guess. Right. Well, that's the thing. So the <laughs> other day, I, I look at the bug trap and there's, whatever, six, seven, eight bugs in there. And a couple of them were alive, like <laughs> moving their tentacles or claws or whatever. And it was it was kind of disturbing. Like, <laughs> oh, this, yeah. this bug is <laughs> it's not going anywhere soon. <laughs> he was out here living his life. And uh, now he's stuck in quicksand, uh, much like uh, the the the... The Dark uh, Princess Bride or whatever. Yes, what Princess, was name? Princess Buttercup. Wesley, Wesley. What? When they when they got stuck yep. in the in the in the quicksand. But I just I thought it, it was I was morally confounded, honey. Well, mm. What do you think? So well, what what do you think about that? Like this little bug is like I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Like Jeff Goldblum in the fly. Help me, help me. Do you have any? I I care greatly about the well being of all God's creatures, yes. great and small. You are a tree hugger. Yeah. You and Hillary Egan. I'm 30% hippie. Yes. I, could, I do not care about these bugs. Okay. I could not care less about insects. Did you look okay. at them struggling to move? <laughs> I do care about insects. Like, I'm always telling you guys not to kill the spiders. That's true. I care about... Because, but you only want the spiders to, <laughs> to, kill the bugs. to kill other bugs, right? I do care about, quote unquote, good bugs. Mm. Helpful. Even though I don't want them anywhere near me. Mm-hmm. But these little beetles, mm-hmm. earwigs... Yeah. Like, no, they can go. They can go. So I'm sure well, okay. there, there's probably some importance and value to their life. Okay. But I don't care enough that I'm not going to continue to put traps okay. in my garage. Well, the second part of my question is, so these bugs, there's there's probably a bug alive right now in our garage that's trapped, embroiled in this yeah. uh, sinister tr- uh, device. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so if you see, hi, Franklin. Darling Sun has brought Franklin uh, Blue. Frankie's our, on the pod? To our pod. Hi, Len. Okay. Frankie can't be up here right now. Len, say hi. Hi, Boopy. What's up? Tell us about uh, Toxic. Who are we canceling on uh, TikTok right now? How toxic is it? I don't know. Okay. So good. <laughs> we'll, okay. We'll, Thanks. Send, we'll send you to media training. <laughs> You're not ready for the hype house yet. Um, okay. So the second part of my question is you see a earwig. Stuck in the glue, still alive, kind of moving its uh, claws or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is, yeah. arms, legs. Nasty. Do you kill it? Well, I... Should we kill it? Well, End its misery. How can you kill it? Cause if you step on it, then your foot's all in that sticky stuff. We'll find a way. Get We'll get a rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you say, really? <laughs> Torturer! 
It's like uh, you're like you're like uh, Saddam Hussein up in here. Yeah, smush it. Oh. End it. Like, oh, End I, it. I married to ISIS. <laughs> Uh, well, what are you going to do? What do you think? I, well, I've done nothing, so obviously they're languishing in peril, <laughs> and uh, and they will per, uh, perish eventually. Eventually, but yeah, uh, it, it's a long, torturous death. Yeah, no, it's slow. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's slow. It's slow and long. Anyways, uh, okay, let's move on to uh, red vines, honey. Now, I saw <laughs> my coworker who I have a very fond spot in my heart for. Her. His name is Joe Koontz, the great Joe Koontz. And uh, one day I saw him, he was eating, he was on break, whatever, and he had a bag of red vines. Okay, Joe Koontz like red vines, okay. Uh, very often, as we talked about earlier, we go to, I go to Dollar Tree, we go to Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree carries red vines. So um, I see red vines at Dollar Tree, I'm like, Joe Koontz likes red vines. And he, he buys them from the uh, vending machine, honey. How much do they cost? A dollar fifty. Okay, that's a fifty percent markup from the Dollar Tree price. Mm. So I'm like, I got a dollar. I I I'm very uh, soft spot in my heart for uh, Joe Koontz. I'm gonna buy him a bag of red vines and uh, give them to him. And uh, and that's what I did. I bought some red vines and for like he wouldn't answer if I I asked him a few times. Did you did you eat those red vines? And he wouldn't answer my question the first few times. So uh. It was almost, a, I think, maybe a week later. It was on Friday. Uh, we're working, hanging out. I'm like, hey, Joe, did you eventually eat those red vines that I got you? And he said, they weren't soft. And I said, oh, Joe Coons. <laughs> why? Why would you say that? Why, why? What possessed him to say? Why that? Even if they were, if me, even if they were, they might have been as hard as a, a, a Mike and Ike's. Or hot tamales or whatever, whatever <laughs> yeah. those hard candies are, but he didn't need to tell me. He would have been he he could have just been like, I enjoyed those red vines. Thank you for buying me those red vines, which would have filled my heart with joy and happiness, and I would have bought him another bag of red vines. But him just saying they were hard or they weren't soft. And I remember specifically when I bought them because I do this for myself. I enjoy licorice, honey. Yeah. I love red vines. Uh, I always squeeze the bag to make sure because there's nothing more heartbreaking than getting uh, red vines that are hard that have been, yeah. feel like they've been I, I, sitting out for <laughs> six days. You told me the day that you bought them and gave them to him. You said, you were telling me this whole story and you said, oh, yeah. I even squeezed them to make sure they were nice and soft for Joe. Yeah. And I, I gave them to him, and I almost made a heart with my fingers like a Taylor Swift does. But I figure we're professionals here. This mm. is a business. I'm at work. Uh, but, yeah. So the moral of the story is just don't say what's on your mind. Lennox Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to ever buy Joe any more treats? <sighs> I, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know. It's like, well, it's like having a cat. You, there's no uh, re- reciprocity right. in love and affection, but I just still want it. And I'm still hopeful, and I'll buy him more red vines. You love Joe, even though I do. he could care less. He's, he's a fascinating individual. Uh, okay. Uh, well, do you want to talk about your paper cut, honey? No. Okay. <laughs> You hate paper cuts. They drive you nuts. <laughs> We're talking about it, okay. And you have we have low quality band aids for some reason. Okay, listen. Yes. It wasn't just a paper cut. Okay. It was a paper cut from the cardboard box that the ice cream cones came in. Ah. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> okay. So, <laughs> so you were So unboxing- it was extra bad. <laughs> cardboard? I thought I thought would think a paper cut would be like <laughs> Stop like it. a machete. Stop it. You know this is hard for me to talk about. I know, I know. But car like a Nestle cardboard oh. box. Yeah, what are those little cones called? Slit you? Uh drumsticks. Drumsticks. Is a but they're, box of drumsticks. they're the small version and they're absolutely fantastic, by the way. They're gone. Me and Luna Marie <laughs> <laughs> made our way through them uh Saturday night. Um but <sighs> Uh, you, you, this you, is really hard for me to talk about. I know. <laughs> like yeah. my palms are sweating. I see the ag on, on <laughs> you're, you're shaking your fist violently in the air, honey. Um, I don't know what it is. I can't, paper cuts, I cannot think about them. I cannot stand them. They're, right. oh, I, I feel like I need to talk to my therapist about it. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, um, yeah, we have really cheap crappy band-aids right, right now. Which has so. uh, delayed your healing. <laughs> 
You're, well, you're, you're like one of those bugs in our trap downstairs in the garage. Gone, we've gone through, I've gone through so many band-aids because anytime I have to wash my hands, um, yeah. take a shower, right. I it completely loses its adhes- adhesiveness. Yes. So it comes off. So I'm going through band-aids like crazy. Okay. And I did not realize how important the fourth finger on my right hand is. Ah. Because I've had cuts and injuries on various fingers. Right. This one apparently is like my... I, I, I use it for everything. It's really hard to not use. Heck of usage. Yeah. Huh. I'm having a rough time. Right. Well, are you putting Aquaphor on it or no. uh, the Neosporin no. stuff? That that will help, honey. <laughs> oh, darling. How long have you had that? Was, was it Friday? Friday? It was Friday. Oh, Today dar- is Sunday. And now it's Sunday. <laughs> Oh, let's, let's uh thoughts and prayers honey thank you thank you <laughs> let's hope let's hope you wish you a speedy recovery <laughs> do, do we need to call 911 do we need to get go to a hospital i need my mommy <laughs> do we need a uh, dr phil or dr sanjay gupta in here where's dr fauci when you need him huh he's uh whining about six wearing six masks but anyways i even though this is like really hard for me to say out loud or even think about i have to share this yes i have gotten a paper cut from a piece of aluminum foil before. Did Yikes. you know? Oh, did you know that was possible? <laughs> to me, of all people, this happened. I, I wouldn't think so, but now that I you know. mention it, I, w- I, I could absolutely oh, see that. Was, well, that oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, aluminum Can you edit foil. Me out? Oh, my screen. Aluminum foil is basically a really small uh, a, sword, <laughs> really thin sword. <laughs> A paper mache sword. I apologize sword. for these noises I'm making. No, it's okay. It's I fun. just, you guys. It's for it's for posterity, <laughs> honey. Okay, uh, oh. I think that's it. Uh, do we have anything else? No, my heart's racing. Yeah, I mean, we have more to we could talk about, but uh, it's it's been an hour, and I'll, I'm gonna cut this down. But it, okay, it'll be. Let's let's uh, near an hour ish. Bring this to a close. Yes, let's bring this to a close. Uh, and uh, oop. Well, alrighty, that's the end of the program. It's been fun, but not really. Let's all try a little harder next time. Like, comment, subscribe, follow, or don't. Do whatever you want. You're a grown-up. Make your own decisions. Do what's best for your family. Please be sure to use our promo code for Squarespace. We don't have a promo code for Squarespace. Goodbye. I love you. We love you. We hope you have a good day today and tomorrow. And sure, I may have called out parents in Rosemont, California for being overweight and unattractive. But I'm still a good person, and we're still good people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day slash night. Bye-bye.